Hello, good evening. Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by The Last Man Standing. It is another live stream, another live podcast. And guess what? Arsenal have just kept a clean sheet away from home. Hello, good evening and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simi. You don't have to excuse me. <clears throat> got a bit of a tingly throat. Uh, definitely got a bout of man flu uh, coming on, but I thought I'd jump on anyway and do a little reactionary podcast uh, to the win in Frankfurt. Arsenal running out 3-0 winners. Goals from Joe Willock, Bukayo Saka and surprise, surprise, Pierre. Emmerich Aubameyang. Uh, I don't think any of us is expected such a positive result, given what's been going on in the last few days and given the performance at Watford. Uh, Unai Emery surprised a few with his team selection. Uh, Emiliano, Emiliano, I should say, Emiliano, that's it, Martinez, uh, started in goal. Callum Chambers was given the nod at right back. In came Shkodran Mustafi from the Wilderness to partner David Lewis at the back. And then you had Sead Kalasinac at left back. There was a midfield trio of Granite Xhaka, Joe Willock and Lucas Torreira uh, with Bukayo Saka operating from the left, Emil Smith-Rowe operating from the right and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang through the middle. That's how Arsenal lined up. And I must admit, um, when I saw the news initially, I was a little bit... Um, I was I was a little bit concerned. I've, I've got to be honest. And I was a little bit concerned because I felt like we'd gone a little bit young in sort of those attacking areas. Um, I find it interesting that Reese Nelson uh, was overlooked. Um, I find it interesting that he was overlooked as well uh, against Watford when uh, Alexander Lacazette was out. I think most people expected him to come in rather than Mesut Ozil, who hadn't played any football. Um, so again, um, interested to know why Unai Emery doesn't really fancy Reese Nelson, but you've got to say, Bukayo Saka stepped up to the plate. He showed his value. He was fantastic uh, throughout, I thought, a constant nuisance. Uh, and thankfully, for once, we found a team with a defence as bad as ours. Now, Frankfurt had their chances, there's no doubt about that. Arsenal had plenty of chances too, though. Um, so it made for a really open game. It was almost like basketball at times, end-to-end -end stuff. The crowd in Frankfurt were fantastic. Um, often, you know, that can play a part. And for particularly some of those young kids, uh, that must have been some experience going out there. If you were there, if you were in Frankfurt, let us know what the atmosphere was like. I'm not going to lie. I was sitting watching it on my couch. Um, let's go over to some of your live comments. A big hello to everybody who is watching us live at the moment. Um, and, of course, to those who are going to be watching or listening to this back later on. Uh, Wang says, good evening. Good evening. To you, my friend. How are you? Uh, thoughts on Saka? I'll come on to Saka in a little bit more detail in a few moments. Uh, the Smiths, 1986. See what happens when you play Mustafi, said no one ever. <laughs> uh, Tommy O'Donoghue says Saka was fantastic uh, for an 18-year-old. Uh, I Edge says, are you Emery out? Yeah, I don't think Unai is the right man. It's not going to change because uh, we won the Europa League game. Uh, let's go. Uh, on to some more comments. Omar says, evening, mate. How are you, my friend? Um, Paul Myra says, Xhaka wasn't bad. Not a fan at all, but at least he earned his money. That's your job every week, Xhaka. Um, I agree. I thought Granite Xhaka was pretty good tonight. Um, not spectacular. I'm not going to go overboard, but I think he was pretty good. Um, I think he'd he, he done okay. If we um, go over to arsenal.com, uh, you'll see a bit more information which i'm going to bring up on your screens uh, while i'm talking for you to uh enjoy and uh, to follow along with me um i was really surprised at some of the player ratings though that i've seen i've read some player ratings um from various journalists uh, james bench uh, a good uh a good journalist uh friend of the show gave granite Xhaka a four which i found really interesting because i thought granite Xhaka did okay um like i said i didn't think he was fantastic but you know, a four seems a little bit harsh to me. What I couldn't work out was why Lucas Torreira kept bombing forward and, and 
essentially deserting Xhaka? Was that an instruction? Felt like at times the formation was a bit more of a 4-1-4-1. Uh, four, one. So like Torreira, Willock, uh, Smith Rowe and Saka were sort of lined up across the field and Xhaka was purposely playing in that hole between the defence and midfield. I don't think that role suits him. I think that Xhaka gets exposed because... Uh, you know, we talk about a lack of mobility, the fact that he needs to cover a, a very wide area of the pitch. And that was a bit of a problem for me. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got to keep clearing my throat. Got a nasty cold. Um, but yeah, I thought Xhaka did okay, as did uh, a lot of other players. I thought Mustafi did okay. Um, I thought he was better than David Lewis for what that's worth. I thought that Callum Chambers... Um, <sighs> Let's let's hear. How do I put this? A lot of people say that Callum Chambers had a good game tonight. I thought that ten out of ten for effort, some good moments, sort of making those overlapping runs. But you could see clearly tonight that he wasn't a left back, and I thought that you know that was where Frankfurt looked to hurt us constantly. Um, Kilo Dogs in the comments says, "Harry, you're always looking for an excuse to bash Unai Emery. Get over it, pal. Stop being miserable. Haven't said a single negative thing about Unai Emery tonight." Only that uh, this Europa League win does not change my opinion on him. And it shouldn't. If I changed my opinion because we won a Europa League game, then you'd call me a flip-flop. You'd tell me that I was jumping ship every two minutes. So I'm sticking to my guns. That's my opinion, mate. Um, but thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, uh, another comment from Al Haji says, it's not great performance, but a good win. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. It wasn't a fantastic performance by any means. Like I said, both defences were appalling. We finally found one who are as bad as ours. Um, both teams probably could have scored five or six goals. But Arsenal took their chances or took more of their chances than Eintracht Frankfurt did. And that was ultimately the difference. Um, I want to talk about Emiliano Martinez in goal because I thought he was really, really good tonight. He looked really assured and comfortable in everything that he did. And uh, I'll be honest, I was one that kind of was like in the summer, well, we might as well get rid of uh, Martinez in and bring Ospina back. That was kind of my way of thinking. But, you know, it looks like they, they've made the right decision with Emi Martinez. He spent a lot of time out on loan at various clubs uh, with different teams. Uh, sorry, just pop that back in. Um, and, you know, it, it looks like it's paid off. He looks a comfortable, assured goalkeeper. And what I found really, really interesting was his... Uh, refusal to play those short goal kicks. If you noticed every single time, Luis and Mustafi would drop into those positions either side of the six-yard box. But Emi Martinez was having none of it. He just wanted to play it long. He wanted to play it safe. And and you know what? Hats off to him for taking the initiative. That's what somebody should have done on Sunday. Um, you know, it's clear that what the manager wants us to do is not going to work. It's dodgy. It's dangerous. causes us all sorts of problems. So I was glad to see somebody taking the initiative. Now, the only problem is that when they come back to that six-yard box, if you then go long, your team are not set up for the long because then all of a sudden those defenders have got to sprint out to get up the pitch and close the gap between the defence and the midfield. And that that is a problem. And I think against better opposition, we'll be punished for that. Um, Tommy says, I think the score flattered us to be fair. Clean sheet, but defending was shocking. Agree. Uh, Ted Wood says, what do you think about Oba playing the whole game? Do you think Laka will be back before time? Uh, Ted, I'm not sure um, is the honest answer to that. I kind of was in two minds about Aubameyang playing at all tonight. Um, but I think... I don't think Emery wanted to take him off before we got that second and rightly so because the game was still in the balance and I don't think we have another striker or anyone who can fill that role anywhere near as good as Aubameyang can uh, at this moment in time with Lacazette injured. Pepe through the middle, a lot of people say that. I, I don't really see it working. Um, so I get why he did it. You just got hope that, you know, Aubameyang can stay fit throughout this period that Lacazette's missing. And then we can hopefully give him some breathers when Lacazette returns and maybe in some of the cups and against lesser opposition. Uh, in terms of uh, Lacazette's return, 
Well, Arsenal said October, but they weren't specific. That could be the 31st of October for all we know. Um, so we'll have to be patient on that. Aubameyang in an interview after the Watford game uh, did let it slip that he's looking at about six weeks out, which would suggest that it's going to be towards the back end of October that we see Alexander Lacazette uh, returning. So uh, we'll have to uh, keep tabs on that and see what happens there. Uh, Anton Klein says, very proud of the academy slash fringe players who stood up for the badge in that hostile atmosphere. Although not always convincing defensively, 3-0 is always a good result. Completely agree, mate. And, um, you know, I, I know it's a bit early to be raving about Bukayo Saka, but whenever he has played, he's shown great signs. And for me now, Bukayo Saka needs to be in with a shout of being in that Premier League squad at least. For me, he's overtaken Reese Nelson because Reese Nelson, for me, you know, he's been given a few opportunities, not that many, um, not as many as maybe he should have. But I feel like when he has played, I, I'm waiting for him to, to show that X factor. Uh, and I don't think he he's shown it so far. And I don't want to be overly critical of him because he's young too. But that's just kind of how I feel uh, about Reese Nelson. I've never been on the Reese Nelson bandwagon, um, particularly after I spoke to a few Bundesliga commentators last season who were very keen to point out that towards the second half of last season. Reese Nelson's form dropped off quite a bit. A uh, big hello to Tom Canton of the Guna Talk. Please, please do head over to the Guna Talk. It's a fantastic channel. Uh, Tom's really stepped it up with daily videos, all sorts of different shows going on there. Great quality stuff. And Tom is a fantastic presenter. So please, please do check that out. Uh, subscribe. Uh, he says, how big do you think the gap between Leno and Martinez is in terms of quality? And is there a chance the Argentine could compete with the German? I must admit, Tom, I was pleasantly supply su uh, my throat. I can't talk today. Pleasantly surprised <laughs> by Martinez's performance uh, this evening. I thought he looked really assured and he looks like a goalkeeper who is very comfortable in what he's doing. The nerves seem to disappear quite early on. I think that it, it sounds silly because as a goalkeeper, you don't want to face loads of shots. You don't want to have to make lots of saves. But when you do have to come into action quite early on in the game, that can often help you settle. And I thought that was the case today uh, with Emiliano Martinez. I think he is a quality goalkeeper, but I think you have to see a goalkeeper over a period of time to, to really know where they're at. Um, you know, and, and the example that I always use when I talk about goalkeepers is Lucas Fabianski. When he was in and out of the Arsenal team, he wasn't very good. He was struggling to find a rhythm. He was often criticised, uh, made a lot of mistakes, lapses in concentration. But since he went out uh, to Swansea, West Ham, you know, you really saw a difference in Lucas Fabianski. And I think there's no position where playing regularly helps more than a goalkeeper, in my opinion. I think a goalkeeper, a lot of it is routine. You have to be in the rhythm of things, coming out and catching things, getting your angles right, uh, judging cross it, judging the flight of balls. That comes from routine uh, and being in the goal often. So uh, I think that the more games he gets, of course, the better he's going to look. Uh, let's move on. Uh, I feel a sneeze coming on, so bear with me if I do have to let it out. Uh, DS Electronics Unlimited, very good show. Keep up the good work. Saka and Willock is on fire. Yeah, Willock was good tonight as well. Um, and the reason I probably didn't jump to Joe Willock straight away is because I've praised him before, because we know now what Joe Willock is about. But Kayo Saka took me more by surprise this evening, but with Joe Willock, we know what Joe Willock is all about now. Uh, so, um, yeah, pleasantly uh, surprised by lots of performances tonight. But, you know, whilst we should be pleased with the away win, it's a 3-0 victory on the road in Europe against a, a decent side in Eintracht Frankfurt. You've got to still, and it's not nitpicking, it's it's being aware of the, the areas in which we can uh, improve and defensively we still looked poor at times um there was still too much of a gap in my opinion between that midfield and defense we were still isolating granite Xhaka as the one defensive or one holding midfield player Torreira was going all over the place Willock was playing that little bit further forward too um so definitely room for improvement I, I think everybody will agree with that um doesn't mean I'm being negative I'm just being honest and you know, yes, let's be happy about tonight's win. It's a great start to the group in arguably what would be our difficult fixture uh, in this Europa League group for sure. 
Um, but, you know, there's plenty of room for improvement. There's no doubt about that. Um, the Smith says, Wenger always got the best out of the youngsters. Do you see this as an Emery strength too? Uh, if I'm honest, mate, I don't think that Emery gave enough opportunities to some of the youngsters last season. But I understand why. I've said it before on here. I understand why, you know, a new manager coming into a club where he's found a group of youngsters who he hasn't necessarily nurtured or raised or doesn't really know very well would be reluctant to rely on them. Because ultimately, Unai Emery, like I've said time and time again, has to get Arsenal back in the Champions League. That is his remit. And you fear that if he doesn't do that this season, he'll be shown the door. So has he got time to invest in developing young players? Probably not. If he feels they can offer something to the team now, then I'm sure that Unai Emery is somebody who would love to help those youngsters and push them on. But I also get why he'd be reluctant to do so at times. I think Arsene Wenger was very good at nurturing talent, particularly attacking talent, not necessarily defensive talent. And I made the point on yesterday's fans phone in, which you can check out now, by the way, it's on our channel. It was a great show. Lots of fantastic calls. Uh, I made the point that I felt that Nicola Pepe probably would develop a little bit better under Arsene Wenger. Um, it's not a criticism of Unai Emery, but Arsene Wenger's strength in particular was developing that type of player. Uh, so, yeah, I just I just feel that that, that would be the case. Uh, now the Arsenal, welcome back, says, thoughts on Aubameyang playing the full 90? Will he be 100% for Villa on the weekend? Um, I've touched on that already a little bit, mate. Um, I think it's because uh, of a lack of alternatives, really. Um, I don't think Unai could have really taken him off before um, Arsenal got that second because everybody would have said it was a negative move had we then conceded a goal. And, the, you know, the way the game was shaping up, it was quite possible that we were going to concede a set, uh, an equaliser at some point. So I don't blame Unai Emery for that. Um, you know, under perfect circumstances, we'd have been able to take uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang off earlier, but that wasn't to be the case. No point crying over spilt milk. It's done now. Um, and I expect him to feature uh, for the entire 90 minutes against Aston Villa. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, T. Cow says, the best goalies don't just make saves, they start up attacks. And that was what I saw in Martinez today. There were certainly a few good kicks from Martinez, a few drop kicks where he sort of would hit the wings, uh, picked out a Bamiang a couple of times, which was great. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic point. Uh, really, really good point. Uh, Anton Klein says, does Saka start at Villa on the weekend? Um, if you're going to say it's between him and Reese Nelson, I'll say yes. If Mesut Ozil's fit, then I'll say no. Um, that's not taking anything away from the young Bukayo Saka. Brilliant tonight. Fantastic performance, but he is very young. Still very early days. Um, and I think that... Given what happened at Vicarage Road, um, you know, this will have taken some of the, you know, the heat off of Unai Emery and Arsenal, this result. But ultimately, we need to get back to winning ways in the Premier League and a home fixture against a side who've just been promoted, who I expect to come to the Emirates, uh, sit back, be very stubborn. I think it's a game probably more suited for somebody like Mesa Ozil. Uh, Mario Dimitriou says, Harry Frankfurt were in the semi-finals last season and lost to Chelsea on penalties. I know, mate. Um, but they have lost a few um, players of note this uh, summer. They lost Jovic and they lost Sebastian Haller, who's obviously joined West Ham. Um, not entirely the same Frankfurt side, but, you know, the same uh, sort of principles, the same sort of core. So, um, yeah, it's an impressive result. But, you know, I think the scoreline flattered us. I have to say that. Um, Tony says, do you think the score was flattering? just in the nick of time, considering Frankfurt had 24 attempts on goal. Yeah, I do. I do. I think it was a game in which both teams could have scored five. That's how bad the defending was all round. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think it was a little bit flattering. No question about that. Um, right. Let's uh, wrap things up. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow morning with an Aston Villa uh, preview. We'll be looking ahead to that game on Sunday. I'll be giving you my starting 11, as I did last week, only got one player wrong last week, which considering I'm dealing with Unai Emery, it's pretty good. Um, but we'll be doing that tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be looking at some of the head to head stats and various other bits and pieces in the lead up to this one. And uh, yeah, 
we'll be back with that. And then, of course, on Sunday evening, we'll be back with a review of that Aston Villa game um, and carrying on producing lots and lots of Arsenal content. Please, please do check out the fans phone in from last night. It was a really good show. Some really interesting callers, some great characters on there too. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so please, please do uh, check that out. It's available in podcast format too. And when you do listen to it back in the comment section, I want you to vote for who you think was the best caller. Um, we had somebody, uh, Alex, who received lots and lots of votes yesterday, but there's been a bit of a change because we've seen some more votes in another direction. So I want you guys to settle it. You're the listeners. Vote for the best caller on last night's football uh, fans. Phone in and they'll receive one of these Chronicles AFC t-shirts. Alternatively, if you want to get your hands on some, uh, we've got them for sale at cost price, which is £10. Um, and the postage and packaging is on us. As I've said repeatedly, it's not to make profit. We're giving them out at cost price. We just want to get the brand and the name out there uh, as much as possible. And thank you guys for you know your constant support. Lots of you watching live at the moment. Lots of you watching things back. Our numbers are bigger than they've ever been. So a big thank you uh, once again from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we'll be back very, very soon. So until then, take care.